morning. I'm Rowena Crosby. And I'm Deborah Renner, and we're your co-hosts for this show. Thank you for joining us for the next 17 minutes for Your Invisible Toolbox, the show that examines the tools essential for working effectively with others. And our program today is pre-recorded because of a calendar conflict. Today we get to examine finding your voice. It's been said that the human voice is the most beautiful instrument of all, but many of us don't play it very well. And we're lucky because our special guest today does play it very well and she is going to share her wealth of knowledge with us. Jeannie Campbell is Tarot's vocal coach and she's going to join us for an interview later in the program and before that she's going to share with all of us a development challenge that's going to help us make the best use of our voice. And we'll introduce an invisible tool, also talk about our voice over the phone and tone. So let's get started, and for those of you that are following along in the book, we're going to be looking at chapter 40, and you'll find that on page 95. Now, not everyone has a memorable voice, one that beckons people to listen to it, but some people do. The story of Ted Williams illustrates this. Homeless Williams sat on the side of a road with a sign that said, I have a God-given gift of a great voice. Wait until you hear it and he wasn't overestimating. Ted's golden voice changed his life. He was offered a job, paid tens of thousands of dollars using his gift of voice. Now the average person has an average voice, but we can leverage techniques to make it better. It may not be our claim to fame, but it can make a difference in the strength of how we are perceived. Now research tells us that 38% of the impact we have on someone comes from our vocal expression. And on the phone, that number goes up to 87%. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that the sound or intonation matters. It registers in the part of the brain that triggers emotion. And from the moment we're born, we start making connections. A lot of that comes from vocal expression and a soothing voice can bring an emotional connection of comfort, loud voices, perhaps fear. And the alignment of the message intended and the vocal quality is so important if we want to communicate the message we intend to. Now we may not have the voice of Frank Sinatra or Adele, <laughs> but we can leverage what we do have and to make sure that it's well received and memorable. Let's look at this week's development challenge. This is the segment of the program we call Your Development Challenge and this is where we challenge you to challenge yourself and form a new habit. And since we have vocal coach Jeannie Campbell here, she's going to take us through an active development challenge. We'd like to introduce to you Jeannie Campbell. Hello, my name is Jeannie Campbell. And as a vocal coach, I spend quite a bit of time helping people to unlearn bad habits so that we can lay down some good habits. What are the bad habits? We all do them. It's not enough breath. It's a shallow breath. It's a lot of tension from our shoulders on up. It's poor musculature support of our breath, and it's poor placement. I liken good vocal production to a three-legged stool. One leg is a good low breath, the second leg is a good support of that low breath, and the third leg is proper placement within our, inside of our head. So let's take a look at these things and please understand that if you're going to retrain your voice and unlearn bad habits, replace them with good habits, it takes a lot of discipline and it takes a lot of time. It's like learning a musical instrument. If any of you have studied piano or taken voice lessons or run a marathon or learned how to do anything that's difficult, it takes a long time. Having said that, I'm going to share with you some very quick tips that you can do while you're getting ready for work, in the bathroom, in the car, things that can warm up your voice and help it be more effective if you have to give a presentation at work or if you have to give the toast message at a friend's wedding, anything like that. So first of all, start with relaxation. We get the first thing that happens when we have to speak in front of people is we get tense. And the tension translates into rigidity in our neck, in our jaw, in our tongue. Our tongue is a very powerful muscle that gets overused and it gets tense. So what you want to do is try to relax from your shoulders 
on up. There are various techniques to do that, but one very simple one is shrug and release. Shrug and tense and release. Shrug and release and shake your hands. And when you shake your hands, visualize shaking the tension down your arms and out your fingertips. The next step is to breathe deeply. Now to do this, the easiest thing is to get moving. Walk up a flight of stairs, run in place, do some jumping jacks, whatever it takes to get the blood circulating and to get the breath down low in your rib cage. Take a look, my hands are really the bottom of my lungs and that's where your air should draw down to, is down here. Here's what people typically do when you tell them to take a deep breath. They draw their shoulders up, creating tension, and they fill about the upper third of their lungs. And that's not going to serve them well. So you want to take a quiet breath and you want to take it quickly. Once you master that, then here's another thing you can do. Now this kind of, this addresses all three legs of that stool I was talking about. It's called the siren. And you can do it in the car, you can do it in the bathroom as long as you alert your family members what you're doing. But basically you're emulating a siren. You're taking the lowest sound you can make and you're running it up to the highest sound that you can make, all the while pushing that column of air with your big muscle groups. People who speak professionally use 75% of their muscles in making a good vocal tone. I know that's surprising to people, but that's what you want to practice. So make sure you're standing, make sure that you've energized a little bit, you're getting your breath drawn down, and here we go. I'll demonstrate on a neutral vowel, which is O. O. Change to another vowel. I'm going to pick A. Ah. Now you notice when I went up to that high note that I didn't lead with my chin. You never want to lead with your chin because what does that do? It pulls all these muscles up and creates that tension that you're trying to get rid of. So always keep your chin down and let the heavy lifting occur with the big muscle groups in your abdomen. The siren is great because here's where we get comfortable talking, in that little mid-range where we've got about a note and a half where we just want to deliver a monotone message. That will kill you, as you know. If you want to be persuasive and you want to be engaging with your audience, you've got to fluctuate your vocal quality, use some highs and use some lows. The siren will remind you that you've got a lot more notes in your palate than you typically use. So the siren is great. It also keeps that column of air moving and supported. The other one is, have you ever found yourself tongue-tied? Oh. We all have. When we're nervous in particular, we can get tongue-tied. Here's something that will untie your tongue. Red leather, yellow leather. Those two phrases. Start them slowly. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Do it as fast as you can do it and still make sense. That will help to kind of untie your tongue. That's something very easy to do. The third thing, thing that you can do, and this was referenced in the Forbes article that Deb and Roe mentioned for this week, it's enunciation. It is the easiest, quickest thing that you can do. Take the text of whatever you are going to say and really be careful about pronouncing every single sound at the beginning, middle, and end of each word. You'll be surprised at how fatiguing that is because we don't do that. So each word is comprised of a sound or a phoneme is what we call it. And for example, cat has three phonemes, k, a, and t. You put those three phonemes together and you get cat. Really try and pronounce all the phonemes in the text of your message. Take your time and savor and work at pronouncing them. While you're doing this, also focus your voice on the farthest corner of the room. 
That's two things that you have to do at once. But honestly, it's the number one thing you can do to make you sound more credible and more competent. So let's review very quickly. Relax from the shoulders on up. Draw your breath down to your abdomen. Support that exhale of the breath with your big muscle groups. Do the siren. Do red leather, yellow leather and practice enunciation. And believe me, you will up your game instantly. Thanks, Janie. Our challenge to you is to challenge yourself to do some of those exercises that were introduced to you by Janie long enough so that they become a habit. And once they become a habit, they can become part of your routine every bit as much as your Stairmaster or your Nordic track is. <laughs> well, now that we have the challenge, let's look at the invisible tool of the week. So it is time to present your invisible tool. Our tool this week has to do with vocal tone. Tone communicates emotion. We know that any, any time that we call a dog, when we say to a dog in a nice voice, oh, bad doggy, they come to us wagging their tail, very, very happy. It all has to do with tone. The tone communicates more than the words. And our invisible tool of the week is to monitor your vocal tone. If dogs can interpret your communication, just think about your colleagues, your employer, and those that you're talking to all day, every day. Now it's time to look at our social media of the week. We post useful content, relevant topics every single day, several times a day on Tarot social media platforms. And we're gonna highlight a couple of those posts that we're going to put out there this week. So our first highlighted post is a Harvard Business Review article and it's called, the science of sounding smart and it discusses how our voice our pitch our delivery can actually communicate intelligence you'll find that on all of the social media platforms at tarot today and our second featured post comes from a Forbes article titled do you sound like a leader this article examines the quality of voice that actually contribute to the perception of our competence as a leader or that take away from that. And this post is gonna be on all social media platforms for Tarot on Thursday. Now we're gonna to move to the segment of our program we call this week's interview. And we are just delighted to welcome as our guest today, Jeannie Campbell. Come on in, Jeannie. Welcome, Jeannie. Thank you. So great to have you here. Thanks great for joining us. Thank you. Great to be here. Well, Jeannie not only has a master's in mass communication, but she was with Iowa Public Television for 21 years as assistant director to education. Jeannie is a master teacher of voice and a voiceover professional. So she brings a wealth of experience to tarot and to this topic of vocal quality. So we're so glad that you're with us. Can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. All right. What's the attribute that you see that most people underestimate with regards to their voice? Thank you for the question. A lot of people are wondering the same thing. The attribute that people underestimate is their ability to sound confident. Mm -hmm. Most people think, well, I can't sound like XYZ, like Joe Blow and therefore I can't be as effective or persuasive. But that's simply not true. Most people, when practicing proper vocal technique, can sound confident and portray that confident, confidence and competence. Oh, and you belong to a special organization. It's VASTA, the Voice and Speech Trainers Association. What does good training with respect to voice look like? Can you describe that for us? VASTA is an interesting group. It is an international membership association and it draws people who use their voice to make a living. So it could be actors, it could be directors, teachers of voice, a lot of theater people on the college level, the high school level, oh, that's fascinating. people from all over. And their lifelong goal by being members of VASTA is to find new ways to communicate good teaching techniques with the voice. What I've observed going to VASTA conferences and attending sessions is how much they incorporate movement and the body with producing a quality sound. A lot of dancing, a lot of moving in rhythm, a lot of 
emphasis on muscle, muscles, musculature, anatomy, mm -hmm. if you will. So it's mm -hmm. an extension of the voice that we don't think about that often. Sometimes mm -hmm. we just think of the voice as this little disembodied instrument in our throats, but it really is a full body production. Wow. So it's thinking about using the entire body and the projection of the voice. What are some pitfalls that people fall into with regards to vocal quality? There are put pitfalls and the biggest among them are breathing, not supporting the breath, and the placement of the breath. And when you don't do those things, a lot of unattractive things may result, such mm -hmm. as a weak voice, such as a shrill voice, such as a phenomenon we call vocal fry, which you've probably heard this, it's that quality that sits in the back <laughs> of the voice. <laughs> that is, it's sometimes hard to even recreate that, it isn't it? It is, it is. And so a lot of those unattractive qualities come through when we're not practicing good breath control, breath support, and placement. Oh, so very briefly, just to close, what's the one thing that people can do to improve their vocal quality? What's an important factor? I think finding a vocal coach, finding someone to work with that can help you get unlearn bad habits, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing because we all have them. Yes. Yes. We do. It's like anything. Like anything. Yes. And then to treat it like any discipline, if you learn to, let's say you were interested in playing the guitar, playing the piano, if you were interested in running a marathon, you would be in it for the long haul and you would exercise discipline and persistence. And I would say the same thing goes with improving your vo vocal quality is the desire to change and then the persistence to stick with it. That makes sense. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, thank Janie. You. And thank you for joining us today. If you missed any portion of this program or if you'd like to share it with others, the entire program is loaded up to Tara's YouTube channel. We'll be off next week for the Memorial Weekend Holiday. Please join us on June 5th at 9.03 Central Time where we're going to explore another aspect of change in the workplace. And now it's your turn. We welcome your feedback and suggestions. You can email your ideas to ideas at yourinvisibletoolbox.com. And don't forget to get out there and take a look at those posts on your favorite social media platform and interact with us out there. If you're not subscribed to Tarot's YouTube channel, you can click the link below and subscribe. That way you'll be alerted to when future shows air. And we would like to thank Jeannie and we'd like to thank Kyle Plummer, our cameraman and director for the, today's show. And before we sign off, we'd like to remind all of you that your invisible toolbox, the technological ups and interpersonal downs of the millennial generation is on sale on Amazon. Thanks for joining us and that's a wrap.